Vern Monk, M-A-U-K. I'm from New York, and when I say New York, people always say, oh, how can you stand that big city? I can stand it because I live 350 miles away from it. If you go out of New York City and head north and west, until they start speaking like that Canadian there, they start speaking to Canadian, you're almost where I live. I live right up at the top corner of New York State, and we oftentimes go for entertainment over to Ottawa, the nation's capital. So we're sort of like half Canadian, half American. Um, my wife is back there. If you have any questions of her, she will be available. She has been my companion since college days, and uh, she is probably my severest critic. And the reason she sits in the back of the room is so she can signal me and give me the RV parts, teaching art ever since I've been here. And I've worked several times for the Museum of Art and Science. And I came in a couple of weeks ago and they said, good, you're back, let's do a class. So that's why I'm here. Now, what I try to do is start from the beginning of a painting and work through and show you pretty much a finished product. Now, I tend to work quickly, rapidly. Um, I don't do a detailed drawing and paint it with little tiny brushes. That's not my technique. My technique is to let it all hang out, uh, make the painting free and light and easy, um, and that's, that's the way I work. So, we've got a rather large group here. The people who have a lot of difficulty maybe uh, standing for a long period of time uh, might want to get their chair up close so they can stand up and sit down. Um, the other people, I'm very comfortable with having you behind me, in front of me, but you're going to have to spread out and try to see what I'm doing up here. Okay? And anytime anybody needs to leave, just go out and take off and uh, you'll come back when you're ready. Now, I don't do a whole lot of preliminary drawing on my painting surface. I usually work it out in my head, and my wife can tell when I am uh, working on a piece in my head because she says I kind of recede into myself. I'm not very uh, conversant, but I've got this one pretty well worked out in my head and on my paper. So what I have here is a mountain cliff in the background, an old tumble-down barn barn in the middle ground, a fence, and a rock fence across the foreground. And I'm going to try to show different techniques. Watercolor has so many techniques that it's impossible to show them in one session. So what I like to do, I'll leave that up with you, Jason. I'm going to... Okay, I need some overlight. Okay, fine. So I do oftentimes masking. And you will see that masking tape is translucent. And if you have a really steady hand, like I do, you can cut through the masking tape and not cut the paper underneath. Speaking of the paper underneath, I am using 300 pound watercolor paper. Uh, this is Arches watercolor paper, it's French, and it's a uh, type of paper that is all rag content. I think they go down to the Ropa Usada and get some of the stuff to make the paper with. <laughs> anyway, it is all cotton. It is about 10 bucks a sheet, which is twice as big as this. And 300 pound, it's quite heavy, almost like cardboard. Paper is graded by weight. Anybody have any idea? Can anybody tell me how this, why this paper is called 500 pound? How much pressure they put to, to press pressure it? Pressure to squeeze it? No. <laughs> That's a good guess. A good guess. Good guess. Okay. How many sheets are in a ream? Office people? 500! You got it, babe. You go to the head of the class. 
there are 500 sheets of paper in a ream, and the paper is manufactured in a standard size, which is a little bit bigger than this is. So if you have 300 pound paper, a ream weighs 300 pounds. Now, the other thing paper is uh, merchandised by and manufactured by is its um, content, and this is cotton. Uh, this does not have anything else but cotton. Um, the other thing is its finish. This watercolor paper is cold press. You can get cold press, hot press, and you can get rough. And this is sort of in between. Uh, this means that when it was dried, it was dried by being pressed with a cold roller. Hot press, of course, would be pressed with a hot roller, and it's smoother. Rough is not pressed at all. It is uh, allowed to dry in its natural state. It's considerably rougher than this. It's very nice. I like to use rough also. I very rarely use the um, hot press unless I'm doing an illustration. A hot press takes much better to nice um, illustration techniques. So. I would do it in uh, okay. Now this is, this one has a lot of masking, and I don't usually do this much masking, but I thought it was <coughs> kind of a fun idea to do it in that way. You can tell what a good and pure life I have led in that at 80 I'm still as steady as steady as that. Uh, yeah, you believe that and I had a bridge to sell you. A big one in Brooklyn. You know where Brooklyn is? Uh, you aren't a New Yorker, are you? No. I bet you know I want to get this done now so I can start working. People are very patient. Now, I carry a lot of brushes with me, and you'll find that I only use a few. Um, a lot of that reason is that I show people different kinds of brushes. So, you know, here's my largest one, and this is a watercolor brush. This is not a pulse painting brush. And when you wet it, it comes to a nice sharp edge. And all kinds of brushes, from little ones to big ones. <laughs> 